you can see where the pepper spray came all over. Um, so I got pepper sprayed and shoved. And thank heavens, there was a wonderful young Iraq veteran who stood next to me and he says, he, he grabbed me as I stumbled as people were pushing. People couldn't see where they were going. The cops kept pushing with the bicycles. And the space we were in got smaller and smaller, so we were really penned in. Um, and that young man stabilized me. Otherwise, I would have been on the ground, mm. trampled. Uh, I remember Goebbels. I remember the time I grew up over there. Mm. And I remember the shrinking of the print media. Uh, and we had one newspaper, and it was called the Völkische Beobachter, the People's Observer. Mm -hmm. And it was the same from North Germany down to South Austria, uh, same uh, propaganda. And I see the same thing happening here. I see the same thing happening here. Uh, a lot of my friends were there, and my friends consist of uh, all age groups, mm -hmm. all colors. Uh, no matter what some of the media say, that they're rats and they're crazy and druggies, etc. That is just not so. We are winning the war, we're sinking the U-boats, and we're into Scotland. And So it, we were doing so well, it's amazing how long the war lasted after we were winning it already. <laughs> and I see the same thing happening here. We have really no more free media that will bring you the issues instead of just the soft, fluff entertainment, the repeated stuff about some actress somewhere being pregnant and not pregnant and wanting to go get married and not. This should be on the entertainment pages, but not on the mainstream news media. So. We have we have such incredible issues here, and and nobody talks about these things. They are not in the media. Whether it's um, J. P. Morgan uh, doing the financing plan for our ill-fated tunnel, which is coming up, mm -hmm. the Chamber of Commerce pushes things like our tunnel because they will earn big profits when they start developing the properties around there when the tunnel when the viaduct is gone and the taxpayers are online for this and I think it expresses the frustrations that the American people feel that we had the biggest financial crisis since the Great Depression, huge collateral damage all throughout the country, all across Main Street, and yet you're still seeing some of the same folks who acted irresponsibly uh, trying to fight efforts to crack down on abusive practices that got us in this problem in the first place. That was President Obama earlier today commenting on the growing frustration being expressed by the Occupy Wall Street movement protesters. That movement is spreading to cities across the United States and across the border to Canada starting next week. Chris Hedges is a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter and author and a participant at the Occupy Wall Street rally in New York last week and in Washington today. He joins us from our Washington bureau. So Mr. Hedges, you were a participant in the protest. How would you describe your role in this movement? Uh, I'm not an organizer. Uh, I'm speaking tonight at the rally in Washington 
and uh, I've uh, given interviews and uh, uh, participated in events in uh, in New York. So, what, what exactly is everybody complaining about? And is to also give me a, a sense of how much momentum this movement has because it looks pretty nothing burger so far. Just a few guys, guitars. Nobody knows what they want. They can't even name the names of the firms that they're protesting against. Very weak, low budget. I wouldn't agree with that assessment at all. Uh, they pulled thousands of people uh, into the street last night. Uh, and uh, here in Washington, when everybody marched past Bank of America, they knew they were shouting, shame, shame, shame. They know the names of these firms. And they know what these firms have done, not only to the American economy, but to the global economy and the criminal class who runs them. Well, Kevin made this point of, you know, nobody knows what they want. What do you say to that? I mean, we know that this is a very diverse group. There are many different agendas at play. Uh, what is the sense you have of what these, this movement would like to see happen? They know precisely what they want. Uh, they want to reverse the corporate coup that's taken place in the United States and render the citizenry impotent. Uh, and they won't stop until that happens. And frankly, uh, if we don't break the back of corporations, we're all finished anyway since they're rapidly trashing the ecosystem on which the human species depends for survival. Um, this is literally a fight for life. Uh, it's that grave, it's that serious. Corporations on fettered capitalism is a revolutionary force. It commodifies everything, human beings, the natural world, which it exploits for profit until exhaustion or collapse. And uh, the bottom line is we don't have much time left. We are on the cusp of perhaps another major banking crisis in Europe, uh, defaults in Greece, followed by Spain, Portugal. Uh, there's been no restrictions, no regulations of Wall Street. They've looted the U.S. Treasury. Uh, they've played all the games uh, that they were playing before. Uh, and, uh, and we're about to pay for it all over again. Listen, don't take this the wrong way, but you sound like a left-wing nut bar. If you want to shut down every corporation, every bank, where are you going to get a job? Where are you going to work? Where's the economy going to go? Uh, corporations don't produce anything. And, uh, oh, really? No. Are you driving, your car? On are you Wall driving a car to the protest? No. It's spec they are speculators. Uh, I'm talking about the financial institutions like Goldman Sachs. They don't manufacture. They don't make anything. They gamble. Uh, they, they use money. Uh, and, and they believe falsely that money is real. As we, dis as we dismantle our manufacturing base and send jobs uh, over the border to Mexico and finally into the embrace of China. Well, I see that you and Kevin could get into an absolutely huge well, you know, argument here. I, I don't usually go on shows where people descend to character assassination. If you want to discuss issues, that's fine. But, I mean, this sounds like Fox News, and I don't go on Fox News. I mean, either you discuss the issues, and look, you have had very eloquent writers, people like John Ralston Saul in Canada, who have laid this out uh, with, you know, incredible lucidity. And to somehow attack this critique by calling someone a nutcase engages in the kind of trash talk that's polluted the corporate airways. Excuse me, let's debate the issues then. You, well, you, like you, to, you were the one who started it. I, you were I not didn't call you issues. a nutcase, I called you a nutbar. You nut said bar, you sounded right? like a left-wing nutcase. Yes, bar. Okay, nut that's bar. an insult. And, hey, and are you, are you left-wing and leaning at least, would you say? No, I would say that... You're a centrist? Can I finish? Please. I would say that those who are protesting the rise of the corporate state are in fact on the political spectrum the true conservatives because they're calling for the restoration of the rule of law. The radicals have seized power and they have trashed all regulations and legal impediments to a, a corporate, a reconfiguration of American society into a form of neo-feudalism. Uh, and that's what we're really asking for is the restoration of the rule of law. Okay, but you don't see any value in the banking system providing a financial infrastructure. That's not what I said. I'm I asking that. you. I'm asking you. A, a banking system that functions as a banking system should. And in Canada, you do not have a banking crisis because you did not tear down the walls between commercial and investment banks and turn all of your banks into hedge funds. If instead of handing massive sums of money to Citibank, 
Wells Fargo, which are, are basically zombie banks. They, they, they still hold tremendous toxic assets. We had created 10 regional banks with $10 billion each and leveraged them 10 to 1. Uh, people could have been saved. Six million people have been pushed out of their homes because of foreclosures and mortgages. We could have reinvested in communities. Small businesses, which cannot get credit, would have gotten credit. Instead, they're just sitting on the capital and not lending it. So we're certainly giving you an opportunity to speak your mind. Just so we can come full circle, what do you suggest should be done with Goldman Sachs specifically? Pro they should be prosecuted. When you shove subprime mortgages on families that you know can't repay it, and then you dice up those mortgages as assets and sell them and bet against them through AIG, uh, that's fraudulent activity. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. So we'd like to hear well, your it'll thoughts. Be the, it'll be the last time.